Everything changes when the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. Everything changes. He is a God of change. Amen. One writer said that he will find you and he will take you in exactly where you are and exactly who you are. But he refuses to leave you that way. Amen. He wants you to change. All of us, from the front to the back, from the greatest to the least. God wants a change in us. And everything changes when the kingdom comes. Amen. One more time, would you clap your hands unto the Lord and would you give him praise for what you feel in this house this morning? Amen. Thank you, praise team, for blessing us today. Uh, and I want to uh, dismiss our ages three to five-year-olds. Uh, can be dismissed now. If you're a guest today and you have a child from the ages of three to five, uh, they have a class prepared for them today. And if you have child child less than three and you would like to utilize our nursery, our nursery is open today as well. Uh, go out these doors to the right, take the stairs to the top. The first door on your right there is our nursery. Someone will be there to meet you and greet you and help you out today. Amen. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. Amen. Anybody enjoy Bible study this morning? Amen. Amen. I want to tell you the Lord is speaking to us in our Bible study time. Amen. And I'm looking forward uh, to continuing that Bible study next week and also uh, continuing my series in the book of Acts this coming Wednesday night at 7 p.m. If you're not making it to Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., you're missing it. Hopefully you're catching up. Hopefully you're catching up on, online later on in the week. Amen. The book of Acts has been good. Amen. And I'm going to read for you today a little bit of that from the book of Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And when you have it, just say, I got it. I got it. Amen. If you don't have it, that's fine. We got it for you. We came prepared. Uh, so, so you could just read along with us today. Amen. The Bible says this, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Somebody say fire. And it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to read for you one more verse in the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 3. And I'll read verse 16. Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with, with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of his shoes, I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. I want to preach for you today, born in the fire, living in the smoke. Born in the fire, living in the smoke. Can we pray today? Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what we feel in this house, the worship, your presence. I ask you today that you would speak to us through your word, that you would encourage us, you would grow us, but you would also challenge us today. Through your word, help us today. Be everything you've called us to be. We'll be careful to not only be hearers of this word, but doers of this word also. And we'll ask you now, Lord, that you would help us. You will let this word be in our spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I was listening to a preacher preach yesterday and he made a statement as a part of his message he was talking about heritage he was talking about legacy he was talking about commission he was speaking to some elders that were in that room I was at a training this week in St. Louis Missouri and uh, a multicultural summit um, some of you may not know this but I sit on a board of uh, 
for the multicultural ministries of the United Pentecostal Church International. And our job in the multicultural ministries of the, the, the United Pentecostal Church International is to reach across um, cultural barriers and to reach across language barriers and to um, help and train pastors uh, to build diversity in their churches. Amen. And uh, not only just uh, diversity of culture, but diversity of ethnicity and diversity of even uh, generational diversity. Um, a lot of churches nowadays are just young churches. Just everybody in the church is young. Nobody's over 30. It's just like the whole church is just full of kids. Um, and, and that's exciting for some people, but I don't believe, I believe the church ought to look like heaven looks. Amen. We should all be in one room together. Amen. And so I sit on a board for multicultural ministries and evangelism. And my father is over the Native American ministries and evangelism, and we have missionaries in different tribes all across America. And that is, that is one of the ministries that we have of that uh, mission. And yesterday, we had a commission meeting where we had a speaker come and trained and spoke. And a part of his lesson, he was talking about leaving a legacy and talking about uh, mentoring and, and, and also imparting something into the next generation. And he made a statement as he was preaching, and he said, I refuse to be a person who was born in the fire and let my kids live in the smoke. And that statement hit me. And I was, of course, taking notes, as I normally do at meetings like that, uh, because I got to preach. I need, I need some word. And so I immediately began to work on my sermon for today. Uh, because I felt that hit me between my eyes that we would live in a time where there would be no fire, there would just be smoke. We, 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 we've all heard the concept and we've heard the, 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 the phrase that, oh, you know, this person or that thing or this entity, they're all smoke, there's really no fire. Have you ever seen a fire that was just not really flaming, it was just smoke. I've, I've, I've seen uh, before and also myself, I've, I've, I've had a fire going and I've thrown stuff on top of that fire that was wet. Maybe, maybe it wasn't ready to burn and the fire beneath it uh, would go out, but the coals were hot and, the, and that, that bed of flame was hot and so it would make everything around it smoke. There was no flame, but there was smoke. It really wasn't a fire. And if I would have continued to put things on top of that fire, if I would have continued to add to that, then after a while, there would have been no smoke. After a while, the fire would have burned out. But that's not what I needed at the time. What I needed was fire. And so I waited a while for the fire to catch up. Because I, the smoke really did me no good. It was just I needed the fire. I needed the flame. 2 Timothy will tell us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, this is what he will say. He said, this know also. He said, I want you to know this. Know this. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. And men shall be lovers of them own selves. Yeah, amen. We're there. Covetous, we're there. Boasters, we're there. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Not, not that I'm going to be bad, is I'm going to hate the people that are good. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Man, that's, that's, uh, we, Come on now, we, can, we, we know we can point some fingers up in here today. Amen. We see it. We live in it. It's, it's, it's plastered everywhere. Everything that I've just said, everything that I've just said is so evident to us. We are living in those times right now. He said, I want you to know this, that this is what perilous times will look like in the last days. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're not paying attention, these are the last days and this is perilous times. 
But he has one more thing to add. That's in verse 5. He has one more thing to add to this list. They, they, they'll, they'll be proud. They'll be blasphemers. They'll be dishonest. They'll be untrustworthy. They'll be heady. They'll be high-minded. They'll be boasters. They'll love pleasures more than God. They'll love themselves more than God. They'll also have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. Yes. You see, me and you, we can get down with chapters, with verses one through four. We, 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 we know all those, but, but, but we also know people who look the part but have no power. Yeah, we, we know people that, that, that maybe, maybe their history could tell us that they were born in the fire, but nowadays they're just living in the smoke. Yeah, they, they, what, what they had was born with fire. I want to remind the church today, and I know that this is a Sunday morning and I'm not here to beat people up, but I am here as a pastor and I'm here to let you know that this church believes in having the fire. Amen. Or we should. Because what I want to remind you is the church was born in the fire. Absolutely. On the day of Pentecost, there was cloven tongues like as a fire. And it was just a prophetic utterance of what John the Baptist had told us that I baptize you with the water, but there's one coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This thing was born in the fire. This thing was ignited in the fire. And there's no place for a church in 2022 that will brag about being born in the fire but live in the smoke. Oh, thank all 17 of you. I appreciate you coming this morning, but I'm here to preach past those 17. I want to push past some people that, that if you were born in the fire, sir. You were born in the fire, ma'am. You remember what it used to be like. Don't let that fire die out in your lifetime. There's no retirement from this. There's no getting away from this. Somebody said, well, I'm feeling like I'm burned out and I understand what burnout means because I've lived burnout before. I've walked in burnout before. But let me tell you, if you got that Holy Ghost fire that never really burns out in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the reason I burned out is because I got so far away from the flame that now all I'm doing is smoking. I got so far away from that fire. I got so far away from where it really happens. What are you preaching this morning, Pastor? I'm preaching that I still believe in demonstration of the power of God. I still believe that we ought to have fire in our services. I still believe that people ought to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that people ought to be baptized in Jesus' name. I still believe that the sick can be healed. I still believe that the dead can be raised. I still believe that the diseases can be broken. I still believe the addicted can come out of addiction. I still believe the depressed can come out of depression. I still believe in the fire. Yeah, I'm not happy. I'm not happy to preach about the fire, but live in the smoke. I'm not happy to talk about the fire, but live in the smoke. I'm tired of living in the smoke. I said, I'm tired of living in the smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, if you go back in your Bible, I want to preach over this a little bit. If you go back in your Bible, you will see the first tabernacle, the first tabernacle. And if you were here for our Bible study today, you know that that first tabernacle was a type and shadow of the tabernacle that's set up in heaven. That's why Hebrews would tell us that God gave it to Moses by a pattern. There's a pattern, a system. God always has patterns. God always has systems. The Bible says this, that hell, hell has enlarged its mouth without measure. Be, be, because when you start looking at hell and the things of the enemy, he, he's always measureless. No boundaries, no fences, no direction. When you start dealing with, 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 with the way the enemy works, the enemy works in no boundaries, without measure. Be, because the enemy wants to take you farther than you wanted to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, make you pay more than you wanted to pay, amen? There's no boundaries to what the enemy... And, and the pattern of the Old Testament tabernacle, that, that pattern that was built, it was built after the manner of what it was like in heaven. And, and, and that's what God wanted. That, that, that tabernacle was it. And, and what he told him was, he said, what I want you to do is when you build the tabernacle, the tabernacle goes first. And when you build the tabernacle, I want you around the perimeters of that tabernacle uh, in, in a circle. I want you to put every tribe. Judah's here. Simeon is here. 
Reuben is here. Benjamin is here. And all the way around the tabernacle, I want you to build the tribes. And I, I, I want their inhabitants, their tents. I want their tents to be set up, to be set up, not within earshot. I want their tents to be set up so they can smell the sacrifice. But when you go all the way to Solomon's tabernacle, you see Solomon's tabernacle doesn't have one entrance. Moses' Moses's tabernacle has one entrance, one way in, one way out. That's it. Solomon's tabernacle has 13. 13 different ways to enter, 13 different ways to exit. That's not including the animal door that Solomon built into his tabernacle. Solomon built an animal door into his tabernacle because Solomon didn't want the people to be affected by the animals coming in and them having to watch the animals come by them and then be taken to slaughter. Solomon built up a convenient tabernacle. That's why when you get to the book of Hebrews, Solomon's tabernacle is never mentioned. Because Solomon's tabernacle was not built after the pattern. Solomon's tabernacle was built after convenience. It was, it was better for us. It, 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 it made more sense. We could, we could get more done if we did it this way. When there's 13 different ways you can come in. Come in any old way you want to. Come in any old how you want to come in. And, 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 and you'll never have to be, you'll never have to be set aside. You never have to be inconvenienced by some animal coming in, getting in your way, some cow or some ox. Or you never have to see that. You can come in, into the outer court and you can buy your sacrifice. Didn't have to raise it yourself. You could buy it. And you could buy your turtle doves and you could buy your lambs. You could buy your oxen. And then you can have that oxen taken from that place after you bought it is a system. Solomon sets up a system of convenience. And this is when Jesus comes. And Jesus is standing in that same place that Solomon built. He's standing on Solomon's porch. And they're out there casting their lots and they're selling turtle doves. And over here they got lambs for sale. Spotless lambs. Get your spotless lambs. Organic. No GMOs. And Jesus turns over the tables. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And Solomon built the tabernacle and would let no one live around it. No one could live around the tabernacle. So everybody could be far enough away to never smell the smoke of the sacrifice. Because the smoke was, in, here's, here's the problem with living in the smoke. When you live in the smoke, you smell the stench. When you live in the smoke, you get offended with the things of the church. When you live in the smoke, it becomes inconvenient for you. When you live in the smoke, it messes with your eyes. When you live in the smoke, it messes with your allergies. I, don't, I, I can't do that. I don't, I don't believe it takes all that. When you, when you live in the smoke, you don't understand what's happening by the fire. But, but, but if you... Uh, but if you live by the fire, if you live by the fire, you know every one of us has been around a campfire before. And, and I don't know why this is, but when you get around a campfire, wherever you sit, that's where the smoke wants to come. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you'll move over here and the smoke. No one wants to sit in the smoke because the smoke is inconvenient. And here's what happened. You live in the smoke so long that you decide to move away from the fire so the smoke doesn't bother you anymore. But I come to preach to a church today in 2022, Truth Chapel. I'm not living in the smoke no more, no. I'm gonna stay close to the fight. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not trying to set up some system of convenience that helps us and makes it, listen, listen, I, I believe this church is very seeker friendly, but let me tell you right now, we're not trying to set this thing up as a seeker friendly church. We're trying to set it up as a savior friendly church. That way when the seeker comes in, he doesn't find us. When the seeker comes in, the seeker finds the savior. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not willing to have a form of it to look the part and to sound the part and, and, and have all of the I's dotted and all of the T's crossed so you can maybe think this might be a Pentecostal church. This might be an apostolic church. They might believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't really know. I'm not, neither here nor there. I don't want to be neither here nor there because the Lord said, I wish you were hot 
or I wish you were cold, but because you're neither here nor there, I vomit you out of my mouth. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be in the fire. Get me back in the fire. Get my family back in the fire. I refuse to be born in the fire and preach to a church about the smoke. No, I'm preaching to you about the fire. There is demonstration in the Holy Ghost. I'm not coming today with a self-help program. I'm not coming today with a life lesson. I'm not coming today with a bunch of stories. I come to you with the word of God. I don't come to you with enticing men's wisdom, but I come into you in the demonstration of the power of the Lord. And I tell you that we still believe in the fire. I believe that you can come out of sin. I believe that God can change your life. I believe that you, I believe you can be made new I believe you can be washed as white as snow. I believe that God can bring you out of every bondage, every brokenness. I believe that God can heal your body. I believe that God can turn you around. I believe that God can bring you in and bring you out. I believe. I believe in the fire. You know what I believe? You know what I believe today? I believe that all those people trying to get people to self-help themselves, you're missing it. You couldn't help yourself. You couldn't help yourself if you tried to. You've been trying to help yourself and look where it's got you. Can I tell you about a man named Jesus? Can I tell you about a man named Jesus who can help you? What you can't do, he can do. Where you can't go, he can go. What you cannot heal, he can heal. This ain't about you. This ain't about me. It's about the fire of the Holy Ghost. That fire that we were born in, in Acts chapter two, is the same fire that I wanna fall in this house today. I'm not happy to preach to you about a fire that fell 2,000 years ago, but not be brave enough and not be bold enough to preach to you that that same fire is the same fire that's in this room today that there's still a holy God looking for a holy people. Uh, we, need it. we need that fire to set us on fire. I want everybody that sees me, they don't see no smoke, they just see flame. They don't see smoke. I don't want a form of it. I don't want a form of it. I don't want a form of it. Uh, uh, me and you, me and you, we've, we, 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 we've got so good at being Christians. We, we are a representation of Solomon's tabernacle because we've, be, we've come so good. Matter of fact, we've become so good at being Christian that being Christian is popular now. Can I tell you that biblically speaking, Christianity was never supposed to be popular? Biblically speaking, biblically speaking, we should all be suffering for his name's sake right now. Biblically speaking. Now, I know we live in America. Thank God for America. You better thank God. You better thank God you got up this morning and drove to the church that you wanted to drive to. Yeah. In the car that you wanted to drive and you get to worship ever how you want to. Do, do, not be, do not be dismayed and do not be deceived by the insulation that this country has given us. I've been to other countries where they can't do what we're doing today. They can't. It's not allowed. It's illegal. They get put in jail if they do what we're doing today. So you ought to thank God that you live in this country. But what the problem is, is that the insulation has put out the flame and it's just a bunch of smoke. It's a bunch of smoke. Can God really do what we say he can do? Can he really do it? Or is it just smoke? Can God really bring people out? Can God really heal? Or is it just smoke? Is the Holy Ghost still falling today? Or is it just a lesson that we teach, but not something that we experience? Yeah. The happiest moments of my life as a pastor is when someone goes down in that water, like a couple Sundays ago, when my friend Kamoa Jackson came, she said, that Pastor, I need to be baptized. And I put her down in that water in the name of Jesus. And when she came out, she came out speaking in a new language, in a new tongue, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what? I don't want to just talk about it from Sunday to Sunday. I want to be every, every time we get together, something like that happens. You know why? Because I still want the fire. 
So they say, well, pastor, you know, we shouldn't do that. That kind of turns people off. People say, well, that's weird. That's crazy. You know, we shouldn't do that. Listen, if the world gets to do what they want to do, then by God, let me do what I want to do. And you know what I want to do? I want to have real church. I want to have fire. I want to have it real. I want it like they had it. I want the church to pray and the doors to be open. Yeah. I want to sing praises at midnight and the earth shake and the chains fall off and the prison doors open. I want what they had. But if I'm going to have what they had, I got to be who they were. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have it. I'm for it. I believe in it. I don't, I don't believe that you have to be a church that believes in the Holy Ghost and, 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 and believes in, in holiness and, and, and believes in the power and demonstration of the word of God and, and then don't do anything in your community, don't help people, don't feed people, don't do all that kind of stuff. That's a, that's a lie from the devil. I, I don't believe that. You know, because a lot of churches that have fire, that's all they want to do. Right. And they brag about that fire. Every service they get, they brag about it. They brag about it, brag about it, brag about it, brag about it, brag about it. And I would tell them to their face today, you think you're on fire, but you're just smoking. That's all you're doing. You're just smoking. You think it's fire, but it's not. It's not. It's not fire. It's just smoke. And, and matter of fact, the reason that y'all all get so hyped up is because all you do is get up there and blow smoke. And matter of fact, matter of fact, if it ain't coming out of your chimney, you don't believe it is smoke. Amen? What I want is demonstration. I want to demonstrate. I want to see it happen. Listen, we can preach about it all day, but, but what are we seeing happen? I hope, I hope that the church right now feels my spirit because, because I'm, not coming, I'm not coming at you today trying to chop you up and say, no, I'm trying to chop all of us up, myself included. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of talking about the fire, but only producing smoke. This church, this apostolic church was born in the fire. It was born in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And I don't believe that God wants us to live any other kind of way than in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I'm not here to beat anybody up. I'm not here to say anybody's wrong. You do you, you got you. But as for me and my house, we gonna live in the fire. Yeah, you know why? You know why I wanna live in the fire? Because I got real problems. Yeah, I got, I, I got real issues. I got things I need God to do and I need God to do them now. And you don't get that kind of answer in the smoke. The smoke never did anything. The fire is what consumed. Yeah, the Bible didn't say that Elijah prayed and smoke fell from heaven. No, 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 no. Elijah prayed and fire fell from heaven. Fire fell. It was the fire that did the work. It was the fire that made the difference. Can I tell you, it's that Holy Ghost and fire that's going to do the work today. It's the Holy Ghost and fire that's going to make the difference today. Listen, we can sing pretty, but unless we have the fire, nothing's going to change. I can preach pretty, but as long as we don't have the fire, nothing's going to change. We can look the part. We can act the part. We can have every standard together we want to have together. But if we don't have the fire, nothing's going to change. But if we have the fire, I want people to walk in off the street, feel our love, feel our acceptance, but I want them to feel the fire from the first moment we start, from the first song we sing. From the, I want them to feel, what is this? You know what this is? This is fire. They can get smoke anywhere else. They can get smoke anywhere else. Matter of fact, most places it's just smoke and mirrors. Just smoke and mirrors. We, we, we heard that saying before. When, when, when someone says it's just smoke and mirrors, what they mean is it's an illusion. Yeah. It's not real. What you're seeing is not real. It's an act. Come on. Yeah. And I'm closing. I'm, I'm almost finished today. Most of the time when we go to, uh, some of you have been before, maybe you, you, you know, you've been to Vegas and seen a, a big you know, magician act. Every magician comes out, what do they come out to? Smoke. They do their tricks, smoke. 
And you're sitting in the crowd and you know this is all fake. But I'm just having so much fun believing that it might be real. That this man can really make a light bulb float across the room. That is so cool. You know, but, but we know, I mean, uh, hopefully you know. It's just smoke and mirror. It's just a, it's a trick. It's a trick. It, it's not real. It's not really happening. It's just, it's just fake. And I believe that the enemy, the enemy has taken the concept of church and he's made us make church a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And it's an illusion. No one's really getting saved. No one's really being healed. No one's really better. I know I'm talking because I think the same thing sometimes and I'm a pastor. I get frustrated when I see fake church. It frustrates me. Because I think, man, does everybody feel like this way? You know, you know one of the things that vexes my spirit? is one thing is that when some pastor somewhere gets exposed that he's been lying and stealing money. You know, it happens like every two days. You know, this pastor arrested, going to fraud. He's been lying, been, been, been paying people to come in in the wheelchairs. Yeah, you see that stuff all the time. And what vexes my spirit is like, man, like, I hope people don't see that and think that every church is that way. I hope that people don't just believe in their heart that this is just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. I don't, I don't want to be the church that people will come to and say, you know what, it sounds good, it feels good, but is it really real? But here's the problem. There is no way for me to make it real for you. There's no way for me to make it real for you. There's no way. I can preach the word of God from beginning to end, give you every detail that I can give you, break it down the best way that I can break it down, make it as clear as I can make it. But until you taste, you'll never see. You know, you know what? If you're happy hanging out in the smoke, then you can prepare to at some time in your life be deceived. A lot of Christians have been deceived today because they have become comfortable living in the smoke. And the smoke can deceive you. You can, you can twist things in the smoke. Yeah, don't, don't tell me people can't be deceived. Don't tell me people can't be deceived. All you have to do today is turn on Netflix and watch some of them documentaries. You'd be like, what in the world? These people were in a cult, didn't even know they were in a cult, deceived. You're like, how can people even, but thousands of people just believe something. Because when you live in the smoke long enough, it, it, everything just, like, like nothing is really real. That's why I encourage you today that if you want to know what is real, go into the fire. Because the smoke can lie to you, but the fire never will. The smoke can trick you. But the fire, there's no way to fake fire. It's either real or it ain't real. It either burns or it don't burn. It's either right or it ain't right. You can fake smoke. Matter of fact, sometimes on Sunday mornings, we have fake smoke right here in the church. We'll put a little, folk, a little fake smoke out here so that the lights look good in the cameras. Gives you a better experience. Yeah, but it ain't real smoke. It's fake. Yeah. It's just, it's just droplets. It's not, it's not real. And the smoke can confuse you. So many people are not in church today because they came to a place where there was a bunch of smoke and mirrors and it deceived them. And now they moved so far away, they ain't even living in the smoke. Listen, I'm not preaching today to sinners. I'm preaching today to saints. I'm talking to people that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. You know exactly what it is, but you've been living in the smoke so long, you've been deceived. What am I saying? I'm saying come back to the fire. Touch that fire again. Get close to, get close to the fire one more time. Get close to the fire. Get as close as you can to the fire one more time. Be ignited. Be ignited again. God, set me on fire. Music can come. I'm closing. I don't have time to read it today. 
but I want to tell you this story. It's in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, there's a unique moment. Moses has been on the mountain. He's been talking to God. Moses comes down the mountain to talk to the people. His face is glowing. His face is literally illuminated. If you, if you look it up in the original text, you will see that it literally means his skin was like on fire. I mean, when you looked at him, it was like, uh, I mean, people were scared. The Bible says that the, the children of Israel were scared of him and Moses had to put on a veil just so they would even talk to him. His face, he got so close to the fire of God. People could tell it. He said, he said, Moses, this is amazing. This is, and it's not fair. We want to talk to God too. Moses said, hey, man, absolutely. That would be amazing if every one of you could have the experience that I just had. Then none of you would have the problem that you're having. You got to watch this. If, if every one of you could see God like I saw God, would be no problems, no issues. I mean, like, because you're never going to change if you, after you've had that experience. Moses goes to God and says, God, the people want to talk to you face to face like I talk to you. Watch it. This is, this is amazing. This is in your Bible. God says, okay. Yeah. But you didn't even know that, did you? But you didn't even know that. God says, okay, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to those people just like I talk to you. He said, you tell them to sanctify themselves. Take so many days because they can't come to me the way they are now. Tell them to cleanse themselves, get, get ready, prepare themselves for this moment. So the Bible says the people, children, the children of Israel, they did that. It took three days. They fasted, they prepared, they washed themselves. And they all started going up the mountain. Here we, everybody's going to see Jesus face to face. Halfway up the mountain, here's what the Bible says. The Lord met them with a dark smoke. A dark cloud smoke. As they got in the smoke, they changed their mind. They said, you know what? Um, I don't like this. What they didn't know is the reason that there was a cloud. Reason, the reason there was smoke is because on the other side of that smoke, there was a burning fire. But they got in the smoke and they got scared. <laughs> Jesus, he said, he said to one another, now, now the, the, the scripture don't say it like this, but let me tell you what they said. They said, God is spooky. <laughs> That's what they said. He said, this is too spooky. This is too crazy for us. They ran down the mountain and they told Moses, Moses, you got this. You're our guy. You got this, Moses. Go, 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 go tell us what he said. Did you know that God was willing to have a face-to-face -face conversation with all of his people? He wanted it. He desired it. He told them to prep them. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I won't even re require you to do what I put Moses through before I talk to him. God desired to meet his people face to face. He, he wanted it. But his people got deceived in the smoke. They got in that cloud, that dark cloud. And they just said, no, 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 we're, we're, we're out. We're, we're done. I wonder what this Bible would look like today if three million people would have seen God like Moses seen God. Our world has forever changed because of what Moses saw. One man, one man, one person saw God and it changed the entire history of our people. Our world is completely different today. Our world looks completely different today because one person saw God. I wonder what our world would look like today if three million people had saw God. Talk to him face to face. As a man would talk to his friend. That's what the New Testament tells us. But they couldn't. 
because the smoke deceived them. They thought, man, God is mad at us. God's angry at us. Here's what I want to say to saints of God that have been living in the smoke so long that you think God's mad at you, God's angry with you, God doesn't want you anymore. That because things are going wrong in your life, because things aren't happening like you thought they should happen, that for some reason you're not worthy and God's mad at you and, and God's through with you and you're not good enough anymore. That, that God's through with your ministry, God's through with your calling, God's done with you. Let me tell you, you've been living in the smoke too long, sir. You've been living in the, sm in the smoke too long, man. I promise you, if you could get through that smoke, there's a God on the other side that wants to talk to you face to face. There is a fire. You know, I know so many people that they're not far from God. They've just been walking in the smoke so long, they're so lost. I know so many people, you know what, they're, you know what? they're good people. They're amazing people of God. They have amazing testimonies. They're always talking about what, what they used to do back in the day, how it used to be, how church used to happen. Oh, camp was this, and oh, conference was this, and man, it was so good. But today, they're so lost and confused because they got so far away from the fire all they're doing is living in the smoke and you can't see straight when you're walking around in the smoke. You're confused in the smoke. You're deceived in the smoke. And I want to preach to a church today and tell you that if you were born in the fire, you don't need to live in the smoke. Get close to God. Get close to the word. Come back. Hear the word of God. This is why the Lord wanted me to preach this to you today. Come back. Come back. I know it's a Sunday morning. You say, Pastor Chavis, you should be preaching to lost people today on a Sunday morning. I am preaching to lost people. That's your problem. You don't even know you're lost. You think it's because you're still in the smoke that you still got it. Maybe you ain't got it. You're lost. You're confused. You, you were born in the fire, but you've been living in the smoke so long. You think this is it. This ain't it. There's a, there's a higher place. There's a higher calling. There's a face-to-face -face experience. There's a touch that you'll never be the same. There's a touch that'll change your life forever. I wonder today if you would stand to your feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. You know what? I, I, will, I will admit today, there's been times in my life there's been times in my life when I have, I have got close. I've got so close and I, I just walked, I've, I've just walked away from the moment because the smoke was too thick. But there's been other times, and here before you today, there's times that right now in this moment that I'm like, Lord, I desire to be close. I desire to have the fire in my life. I don't want just a form of godliness, but I want to have the power that goes along with it. I don't want to just look the part. I want to be exactly what I'm saying I am. I don't want to just talk to people and tell them, yeah, I'm a pastor. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I believe in all those things, but not be willing to say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Not be able to say, such as I have, give I to thee. Because those are men who are living close to the fire. As every head is bowed today, every eye is closed, I'm going to open this altar. I believe I've talked to some people in this house today and you need to come close to the fire. Would you come today? Would you come today? Every head bowed, every eye closed, the one looking around. But I just need some people to move forward and say, Lord, I'm coming close. I remember I was born in the fire, but I've been living in the smoke. I've been living in the smoke, Lord. I've been, I was, there was a time when I was burning. I was, I was ablaze. I was, I was determined. I was, I was so, so on fire for God. But today I feel like I'm just living in the smoke. It's irritating me. It's irritating my eyes. It's irritating my breath. I, I got to get back. I got to get back close to the fire. Come on, would you lift your voice right now all over this room? Oh, yeah. I feel a re-baptism today. I feel a re-baptism coming on us today. If you're standing there today and you're thinking, 
Now, you couldn't be talking about me. I am. I'm probably talking about you. Yeah, this, this message couldn't be for me today. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it is. It is. Let me clear it up for you. It is for you today. You got to get back close to that flame. You got to rededicate yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm coming back to the fire. Lord, I'm coming back to what it used to be. I'm coming back. Lord, I know what I need to do to get right. I know what I need to do to get close again. And Lord, I don't want to live in the smoke no more. But I'm coming to that fire. Come on, all those buildings, would you lift your hands and would you receive that fire right now? In the name of Jesus, I pray that it would fall fresh. I pray it would fall fresh on you again. I pray that it would fall fresh on your life. I pray it would fall fresh on your ministry. I pray it would fall fresh on your anointing. I pray it would fall fresh in your spirit. Come on, that's it. I feel it. That's it. Lift those voices. Lift those voices. Lift those voices. Oh, God. That's it. Cry out to him. Cry out to him today. From the front.